to Always Learning. And what are we doing today? Learning. Yeah, I actually have a celebrity here today. I have Tom Haferford from Parks and Rec, AKA my nephew, uh, Lucas. So he's gonna help you one to learn how to make wine. So I brought him along in case he's got any questions. So we're gonna um, get to it. So when you make wine, you can make it from grapes, but a lot of times what's easier, what I've done, I've made about uh, 20 different kits and that equals to about over 600 bottles. So you get about 30 bottles in a kit. What you do is you can order online and you order the uh, kit. It comes in a bag, so they've already taken it and they've squished all the grapes out. So you're gonna get that. This is a blackberry Pinot Noir, so you're gonna get another bag that has the blackberry flavoring. But this is the uh, Pinot Noir grapes already squeezed down. And then you get, um, it comes in a little pack. It comes with instructions so you can't mess it up. If you can follow a recipe and you can read, then you'll make uh, perfect wine. Like I said, I've done about uh, 20 boxes and every one of them has turned out well. But you get stuff to, to basically degas it, yeast, and then some other packets just to help with uh, uh, chemicals with cleaning in the process. And that's really it. So there's four steps to making wine. The first one is, is we're gonna take this bag, we're gonna put it in the primary fermenter and it's just a literally a six gallon bucket that's made for food with a lid. It's got a little hole in it and this is a bubbler. And what the bubbler does, it basically, it's filled with water. It lets the CO2, when the yeast eats the sugar in the, in the grape juice, it's gonna make alcohol, the wine, and then it's gonna allow uh, CO2 to escape up through the water and then up uh, out by the bubbler at the same time keeping air um, from escaping from the, or air getting into the primary fermenter. So you got the primary fermenter that lasts about seven days. Once it's done, we take it from there um, through this siphon. We'll actually siphon it out of the primary fermenter and then we'll put it in, this is a glass carboy, they come in plastic, it's basically pulling a big water jug. Um, we'll siphon it into here, and all we're really doing is we're leaving the yeast and all the kind of gunk in there, siphoning the wine into here. And then this is the secondary fermenter where it sets for another seven days to continue to make alcohol and to let the CO2 escape. From there, we'll, we'll take, add a few of these chemicals to help degas it, that's the third phase. And this actually goes on a drill. You can, use a, you can use a spoon and we'll stir it and basically let the rest of the CO2 escape from the uh, primary fermenter. Then we'll take it, we'll take it out and into a clean bucket and then we'll put it back in. And then it literally sits there for two weeks where it just clears and the rest of the gunk settles to the bottom. We'll siphon it from here at the end of that 28 days into this bucket. And then we'll turn around and take it from that bucket into a bottle. So from the, the box to the bottle, this is a uh, wine that I created. I did, a, it's got a cork in it. I put a little wax seal on it um, that I made. You can get as fancy as you want, or you can get as simple as you want. And that's really about it. The kit, if you buy one, is gonna be about, that comes with the, uh, bucket, a spoon, the bubbler. It's going to have a hydrometer that we'll get to later. Probably a wine thief to help you extract wine. Um, a corker and usually some kind of wine whip with a siphon. And you can get all that for about 150 bucks. That's kind of your one-time cost. And then you'll use that whenever you're making a kit. So um, anyway, so we're going to, we're going to go through the steps. And then on another video, I'll show you how to uh, make labels and put wax on it and dress it up if you want. In this video, we're just gonna show you how to kind of go from the box to the bottle. All right, so do you have any initial questions? Yeah, so you said it's around 150 bucks for the equipment itself, but as yep. far as the kit goes, um, how much are you looking here? Is there a price variation between a Pinot Noir and maybe a Cabernet or? Is yeah, so yeah, so most of the cabs are a little bit more. Why I don't know. They come with wood chips that you're going to mix in, some other stuff. But most of them are usually from about sixty to seventy dollars, and you're going to get thirty bottles. So if you break that down, you're about 
really three dollars a bottle if you look for some deals online or at some local places you might get them for fifty dollars and so then you're you know then you're talking under three dollars per bottle and each bottle has about four glasses in it so yeah that, that's that's kind of the deal but no they're i mean you can get um more select blends and maybe like from uh, uh, Italy or Argentina and those select ones may run you a little more but for your typical but every one I've made is really good and like I said it's it's pretty inexpensive if you put wax on it and you put the label you buy new bottles every time that's going to run it up more but I mean literally you could you could store it in a little Coleman jerry can mm -hmm. and it'd be fine if you want to get four to four or five of those and call it a day get started with the primary fermentation which is the first seven days like I said there's the primary fermentation the secondary the degassing and then the bottling so it's pretty simple it's almost every seven days so you really can just set it and forget it um, and only have to touch it really four times uh, during the whole the month it's going to take 30 days to, to make the wine so during the primary fermentation we literally just take this bag of the Pinot Noir uh, grape juice that they squeeze down for you. We're going to put that in the primary fermentation, which is just a fancy name for a, a bucket. Then we'll add uh, the water up to the six gallon mark, which is this little line in here. And then we will look. I got these. These are just stick on thermometers that I got on Amazon. I think they're a 10 pack for, for five bucks. And it as it heats up, it will turn darker or lighter blue. And the range you want to be is 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit because that's the kind of optimum where the, the yeast can work yeah. um, in it. So something I notice is is the bags you got here in the mail are a little chilly. So <laughs> well, I, I didn't know if if when you put that, because I had a fish when I was a kid and, and I put the I put the fish in the water before the water was room temperature and I killed the fish. So I didn't know if, if when you put the cold wine with the water and it's, you know, maybe it's at 50 some degrees, you know, how do you, how do you balance that? You know, do you have to wait? Do you have to add warm water? Does it matter? You can do it a couple ways. So usually what I'll do is I'll fill it up about three quarters of the way, look at the temperature, and then I'll add either warmer, cold water, or even ice to it to get it in that range. If it doesn't, that's the great thing about wine. You can almost, it's almost impossible to screw up. Um, you can, like I said, you have to do things seven days. If it goes 10 days, it doesn't really affect it. If you go 14, I've done it where you kind of, you know, just you, you work it into your life. Um, but yes, yeah, so if the temperature isn't right, you literally can just set that wine, let that wine and water set in an area. And eventually it's going to get as long as it's inside the house or somewhere that's 65 to 75 degrees, it's going to get in that range. And then when it does, then you add the yeast on top of it, put the put the lid on top of the bubbler. Gotcha. And that's the first phase. Like I said, it's pretty hard to pretty hard to screw it up. So that's what we'll get to. All right. So here we are doing the primary fermentation. We've got the bucket in the sink, and go ahead and take that. Um, that's the juice bag of the Pinot Noir. It's got a cap on it, which is kind of tough to do. That's why I'm having Lucas do it, so he can get it all over himself. And then you're simply going to pour that very carefully because it'll splatter in the, in the bucket. There you As you can see, there's a lot of remnant left in the bag. So what you do is you just run it under some water. Fill that thing up as much as you want. Uh, just turn the water on, kind of run underneath, run it, put it in the, put it in there. Yeah, just fill it until it gets maybe a third of the way full. That's probably good. And then just yeah, just slur it through the whole bag, just kind of make it flat, like it was laying there earlier. Yep. And then just, just run it out. Pour it back into the bag because we're going to just add cold water to it anyway. And if you don't, if you don't kind of get it all or you feel like there's some left in there, just kind of rerun it again. Okay, so we got the primary fermentation. We got the uh, bag of wine juice in there. We've got it up 
uh, filled to the six gallon mark. And now we need to check the temperature. How are we looking on the temperature, Lucas? We are looking pretty springtime, 68 <laughs> degrees. 68 degrees, and we're supposed to be between what? 65 and 75 degrees. That's right. Too, too low, and the yeast doesn't eat. And too high, it uh, doesn't want to eat either, and it kind of hurts it. So now we're going to add the yeast, and you just sprinkle it to the top like uh, salt. Just kind of get it across there. Oh, it's a little bit in one spot, but as you can see, it, it'll eventually kind of... And I'm going to carry it. We're going to carry it back to the office. That's where we store it, so it's going to... It's going to kind of slosh around a little too, but you don't stir it in. You just kind of let it set on top. All right, slap that lid on. Like I said, this is just a standard food bucket, but it does have a really tight air seal on it. And then you stick this little bubbler, which is half full of water. And the whole principle is, is the water prevents air from getting to the, the juice and it allows the CO2, as the yeast eats the sugar in the juice, it allows the CO2 to escape um, so it doesn't build up in the uh, bucket. And then you simply just want to put it somewhere that's going to maintain 65 to 75 degrees. Put it in a coat closet. I put it in my office. Just anywhere it's going to stay in that range is fine. And then you're literally not going to do anything with it till seven days. Um, don't freak out. It's going to take probably six hours before that thing starts bubbling. Sometime between six and 24 hours, it'll start uh, bubbling, and that'll mean that the wine, uh, the yeast is doing its job. You got any questions from here? Now, something like this, if I put it in my house, you know, say I put it in my office or I put it in my coat closet, am I going to get a, you know, is it going to be an odor? Is it, you know, a bad odor or is it going to be a mild smell? Is it, you know, am I going to get any smell at all? Yeah, it's going to, it's going to stink a little bit. It's going to smell like fermented wine for a little bit. Not overwhelming, but you'll definitely, you'll definitely smell it. Like I said, I have it in my office and it's just a uh, spare bedroom. And if I walk by the hall, I can, I can smell it, but it's not something that's going to run you out of the room. Yeah, well, you can save money on wallflowers, save money <laughs> on candles. And... Yeah, smell a little wine, make you feel like you're working, but you're not going to do anything now for, for seven days, and then we'll move to the secondary fermentation. All right, well, we're back. It's day eight, so what's happened is we filled it up, we let it set, we let the yeast do its work. It bubbled, it got rid of the CO2, and it kept the air from getting in. That's just little bubbler does. So we're done with the, the first uh, fermentation in the bucket, and now we're ready for the second fermentation. So all we're doing today is we're going to transfer it from the food bucket, the primary fermenter, and we're going to uh, move it over into the carboy, and it'll sit there for another seven days. First, though, we're going to take a sample to make sure it's done what it needed to do. Let's do it. All right, so we're going to take the lid off, and we have the wine beef along with the hydrometer. And Lucas is going to show us how to kind of do that real quick. So you just take the lid off. Looks like wine. <laughs> Looks like wine, smells like wine. Yep, yeah, and you just use the wine thief to get some wine out. And all you're doing is sticking it in there, putting your finger on the end of it, and filling it about 60% full. And the hydrometer basically just tells you what the sugar, what the alcohol content of it is all you're doing. You're making sure that it's, it's done what it needs to do so you actually get alcohol in your wine. If you don't have a hydrometer, just literally let it set for two days longer. So instead of doing it on day eight or whatever the kit says, just do it two days longer because that's what the kit says. If it doesn't fall in that range, that way you're covered. Like I said, this is an exact science, so you don't have to, you don't have to do it perfectly on the exact day they said. Then you're just gonna set it in there. Let me turn it down to 60. Set it in there, and then you're just gonna spin it, and that, the only reason you're spinning it is so it doesn't touch the sides. And we're gonna get a reading. And it's looking like it's what, Lucas? Uh, 1.0, 1.01, 1.02 1 maybe. Yep, and it's supposed to be below 1.02, so we're good. So now we can move it over to the car. Then you simply just return the wine back to the bucket, 
and you're done with the hydrometer. So now we're going to move to the next phase. This is a, you can do it the old fashioned way. You can put just a hose in there, suck on one end like you're stealing gas and stick it in the other one. But this has a little more sophisticated pump. So you literally just put it in there. You want to make sure that your bucket is a little bit higher than your carboy that you're transferring in there. And then you just start pumping and it'll start moving the wine over. Siphoning wine out of uh, <laughs> into a carboy and not to be confused with siphoning gas <laughs> out of a car. Right, it's kind of the same process. It is. I mean, it's a transferable skill. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised more people aren't using these to, to steal gas. Once it gets to $4, that's probably what we'll see. Yeah, no doubt. And it's okay if it splashes in there because you're kind of getting rid of some of the CO2, so you're kind of helping yourself out. Like I said, now you're just pretty much sitting there waiting until it gets to the end. When it gets to the end, we'll tip it up to make sure that uh, we get most of the liquid. And there'll be about this much sludge kind of in the bottom, and it's the dead yeast. So we're getting towards the end, and it starts getting down. And when it does, you want to tip it so your siphon stays with most of the juice. You're gonna have some, like I said, about an inch of sludge left over in the end, but to keep it flowing without getting more sediment in it, then tip it. Here you hold it on. Yeah, sure deal. Bucket that way. You tip the bucket that way. It's towards Jana. Towards Jana. Yeah, it's just a... How's that for skills? Tipping the bucket. It's kind of a purple looking paint. It's just. That's what's left. You'll just clean it out and it's ready for it'll be ready for the next batch of wine you want to do. Okay, so now we're gonna take this. <clears throat> this is all ready to go. This is ready for the second fer fermentation. We're just gonna put all this in the bucket, a big little snake. Then you literally we have the uh, bubbler again. It's half filled with water. Once again, it's going to let the CO2 escape and bubble out, and it's going to keep the alcohol or the oxygen from getting to the, the wine. And you just, it has a little rubber stopper here, and you just slide it right in there. And now it'll just sit for another <clears throat> seven to uh, 14 days, and then we'll take it out and do the next phase. Okay, well, today we're getting ready. It's day 20 in the winemaking process, and all we're doing is we're doing the degassing which is what you do in wine, not necessarily in public. Um, <laughs> we're back with the Blackberry uh, Pinot Noir, and we're literally just going to transfer it from the secondary fermenter back to the primary fermenter, which is basically a bucket, and then we're going to degas it. We're going to add like four different chemicals that do their part of the degassing process, and as we're going, we'll, we'll talk about those. And then the secondary fer fermenter where it'll literally sit for another 14 days and just kind of clear and then we'll bottle it. You got any questions or? No questions right now. Okay, well we'll get to it. So we're going to start, we're just going to uh, siphon this from the carboy over to the primary fermenter. I did wild like that. Here it goes. That's it, we got lift off. Man. It just does its thing. That is how it's done. Clean the carboy and now we're just letting it set and with uh, star sand and now we're letting it set for a minute while we stir the wine so that it's good and sanitized so we can put the wine back into the carboy for its final clear. So you don't have to have anything. This is actually called a wine whip. There's different ones that you attach to a drill. And you can see they, they just basically do the work for you. But if you don't want to, you can just get a regular spoon. You need a longer spoon. They usually sell these long two and a half foot plastic spoons that you, you can stir them. Because you're going to be stirring the four, the four ingredients. You're going to be at different times, but you're going to be spinning those for anywhere from a minute to two minutes each. So it's going to be like four to five minutes worth of stirring. So it's just easier with a, with a uh, wine whip on a drill. So yeah. here you go. The one thing is you want to reverse it after about halfway through and then 
when you're also whipping it, don't get too crazy because if you get going really fast, it's going to spit it out of the, out of the fermenter. All right. All right. Let it rip. Hang on. We're going to add the first one. Oh, Not yeah. Let it rip yet. <laughs> okay, stop. So this is the uh, potassium sorbate we're going to put in there. You just sprinkle it in and then stir it for 60 seconds with this kit. Stir so now. Go for it. All right. Just now we're going. Low and slow. I'll start the timer. And this is simply just removing the suspended oxygen out of it, if there's any left in there. Okay, so now we're gonna, we mix uh, in two ounces of water, potassium metal by sulfate. And we're, gonna, <laughs> and we're gonna stir that in for 60 seconds. On the clock, go. Okay, now we're gonna just mix in for another minute. The it's called the kesazol, and it's basically it binds with the phenomics and the uh, peptides that are found in fruit. It's gonna take that out, which kind of gives you the taste of the tannins, which is kind of the biting stuff in Cabernet wines. Just spin it for another minute. Spin it for a minute. Spin it to win it, baby. So here's the fourth packet. This is, is chida sand. That's how I say it. That's how all the kids are saying it nowadays. And this basically is going to grab all the globs or the solids and adhere to it, and then it's going to drop it to help your wine clear. And again, we're just going to pour it in and stir it for 60 seconds. Here goes nothing. Okay. Godspeed. Oh, it's freestyle. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Get really blobby. Now imagine if you're doing that with a spoon. How tired you'd be. So you break out a spoon for like four minutes with a spoon. Mm -hmm. Everybody should have a wine list just, just to say they have one. So, so now we've spun the wine in the primary fermenter, the fruit bucket. And now we're literally going to pump it back into the carboy where it's going to stay for the next 14 days. And all it's literally going to do is sit there and clear. All the ferment thing is done. It's made the wine. We're just letting it clear. And that's when all the solids are going to fall to the bottom. You didn't have to do that for slow motion. I did it for you. I don't like that. See that? You don't even have to edit the speed because I'm <laughs> just already in slow motion. So we're draining it, <clears throat> we're siphoning from the after we spun it back into the carboy, but if you can't, if you, for some reason you can't siphon it, at this point it's okay to put a funnel in and just pour it in because there's not really any settling or sediment that's left in the primary fermenter at this process. Okay, so we got a little bit left. We're just gonna pour it in through the funnel into the carboy. You can see there's not much sediment left in the, in the buckets here. Okay, that way, if, if that's easier for you, fine. And then we're gonna put the stopper back in the carboy and now it's literally just going to set for another 14 days and it'll clear and everything will fall to the bottom and then we'll take it from the carboy into the primary fermenter one more time and then we'll take it from the primary fermenter into the final bottles here's some pictures of the wine just sitting in the office clearing that you can just see it's getting clearer as it goes Okay, so now we're gonna, we've got the bottles all clean, we've got the corks all soaked, everything's ready to go. We're gonna take it from the carboy and put it in the primary bucket. And then this is a blackberry Pinot Noir, so we're gonna add the blackberry juice to it as we make it and then just kind of stir it in. And then we'll bottle it. So we're gonna start pumping. I'm gonna hold that. Yeah. If this video gets 75 million views, I'll drink all the sediment off the bottom of this. Nice. There you go. There we go. Okay. 
there it goes. And then once it gets about half full, then we'll put the, uh, the bag of uh, blackberry juice in there. And then we'll stir it for about two minutes once it's all set before we bottle it. And that's it. Here's the corks we soaked. I just kind of put a little um, bowl in there to kind of hold them down. And then put a little plate on top of it. The secret is to get the plate to stay. Here we're just taking the blackberry juice and adding it to the blackberry pinot noir um, as we're doing the final siphon just to kind of get ready for the final bottling. Okay, so we transferred it from the carboy into the primary fermenter, the bucket, and now we're just going to stir it for two minutes since we add the blackberry juice. Once we stir it, then we're gonna start bottling it. And all we do to bottle it is we've got another, this little attachment goes on there. And as we put it in the wine bottle and this presses the bottom, then the wine will start going in and then it'll come back out. So this goes in, it starts filling. When we pull it up, that comes out and it stops the wine. That's a simple process. We got a good flow, I think. Oh, you gotta push it down. Oh, push oh, oh, okay. There you go. There, now, now you control it. So you're just gonna watch it. So you can see it's getting here. You gotta kind of watch, it's kind of hard to see on the video. And then we're gonna let it get to about here. And then we're simply gonna pull that up. And you can kind of push it back in. So as you can see, now the wine is not flowing. And then we're gonna go into the next bottle. And we're just gonna set this bad boy up on the counter. Okay, so we got three different types of corkers. This one, you pretty much put your soaked cork for an hour in here. Then you're going to squeeze it, and you got to squeeze it really hard because you got to get that baby flat in there. Then I use a little rubber thing underneath it so it won't slide, and you got to push it down as hard as you can. It always makes me nervous this thing's going to fly out. There it is. Cork bottle of wine. That's the one. That's one side. Now, same bottle. There's this guy. <laughs> Load the cork in here like you would a shotgun. Put it over the bottle. Say a little prayer. Push it straight down with both hands. There you go. A little mashed. Okay. It'll still, still work though. No problems here. And then the last one. This is a Portuguese, like I said, it's probably three times the price, but it's definitely, definitely worth the price of it. This goes down. It's got a little seat for the bottom of the bottle. Set it. Drop your cork in. Gingerly push it down. Push it down, and you're done. Perfect bottle. You can set the, uh, up here you can adjust the height of how far you want it to compress it in. If you're doing more than one run, I'd spend the money and get one of these. All right, you're up next, Lucas. All right. It's got a little notch in there. Yep. Like that. Yep. Load the cork. Here goes nothing. Push it down and pull it up. There you go. Every bottle, every time. There we go. Every, every That's it. That is pretty much the next video. We'll show you how to do if you want to do labels, if you want to put uh, wax on them to dress them up a little bit. But that's basically the process. It takes about four and a half hours total and then 30 days. The whole process. So you are now a vendor. You graduated. <laughs>